Hey guys, it's Amy and Ben here to chat again. This time we're doing a series, which may end up being a channel, um, and we're endeavoring to document our personal finance journey. Yeah, so this is a new thing for us. Um, we've got an existing uh, series and channel on yep. rants, raves, and reviews, uh, where we review um, TV shows mm-hmm. and movies and things like that. But something that has been very close to Amy's heart. Um, <laughs> and yours. Uh, more yours, um, but a, a passion of yours um, mm-hmm. is been watching lots and lots of self-help oh, yeah. um, videos, particularly um, the ones around finance. Yeah. And so we thought we'd spend a lot of time discussing this stuff and doing this stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. Or why- me ranting at you about it. Yeah, yep. interestingly. Um, <laughs> uh, why don't we invite you, YouTube, into the conversation with us? Yeah, so... Um, First things first, I think we should get the disclosure document yes. out of the way. So Amy, as a previous lawyer and me as working in finance my entire life, we need to make sure that we give this. Mm-hmm. This is not personal advice. We have not yep. considered your personal situation. Mm-hmm. It's not even general advice. All we're doing is recounting the things that we do and what we consider. If yep. you want advice for yourself, you need to seek a professional and disclose your personal situation. Yep, that professional is not us, just to be clear again. No, no, it is not. (laughs) So yeah, a bit about us. As Ben's mentioned, I'm a former lawyer, so I still am on the solicitor's role, but I just don't practice and I don't currently have a practicing certificate. And that's been something that I've voluntarily chosen to do. I basically got to the point in my career, I've been in government, um, uh, in an in-house legal counsel my entire career, and figured that I just wasn't really um, passionate about law and wanted something different. So the way um, I went about it is took an at-home working role where I'm focusing on legal documents and editing them. So that brings in my um, writing credentials a little bit more. Still quasi-legal, but not with um, Not practicing as a lawyer. Yeah, so and I, and that's been suiting me really well. But I'd love to chat a bit more on the channel about working from home and what that experience has been like, and how that's affected our finances and things like that. As for Ben, yeah, uh, so I work in finance my entire career. Um, so around primarily um, corporate lending, consulting, and now a lot of uh, work around transformation as well, mm-hmm. um, with a with a specific focus on digital. And so essentially we are dinks, so well, for, former dinks. Yeah, so for people out there who have never heard of that acronym, it's double income, no kids. Yeah. As Ben mentioned, formerly dinks because we, as of three months ago, have a newborn baby daughter. Yep, which you may hear occasionally in the back of the uh, the. Yeah, the we'll try to edit her out as much as possible, but she's yeah. getting going through a loud stage. I don't think that stops until she's about 35, so... Mm. We'll see how she goes. And the other two babies that are also the fur babies. loud. Yeah. <laughs> we have two uh, small breed dogs, pugs. Yeah. Small breed, but heavy breathers. Yeah. Bushy and Priscilla. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our kind of current lifestyle. And we wanted to just chat in this initial conversation a bit about our current portfolio of assets yeah. And depreciating assets. <laughs> no, <laughs> not with the Sydney property market. Yeah. So, um, Amy and I, we both individually have investment properties mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, both of those are in Sydney. Yeah. And at the moment, we uh, recently had moved to a duplex. Suburban. Yeah, yeah. four bedroom duplex, um, very suburban in southwest west of Sydney. We were doing this to get a feel for, is this the right type of place for us to move into next now that we'd started a family? Mm-hmm. Um, on the that, dogs have a yard. Yeah, the dogs have a yard. On that one, um, I think we can say we found out quite early Mm -hmm. that the space is way too big for our semi-minimalist lifestyle. Yeah. So I think that definitely plays a huge part in it that Ben and I are um, trying to be as minimalist as possible, but I don't know if we'd call ourselves a minimalist. Well, I wouldn't say I'm trying. I'm feeling You just naturally are. It's a minimalist living with a minimalist cross maximalist. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that my taste in things just isn't necessarily Scandinavian 
um, clean lines. Like yeah. I do like a little bit of the Baroque. French, yeah, a bit of French pizzazz. Yeah. So I wouldn't say, but I also am very much an advocate of the practical yeah, or are. pretty approach. So I'm not into like trinkets just for the sake of being trinkets. I also don't mind a um, simple or minimal space, but just with stuff and I'm happy to spend money on stuff, but I just want it them to be things that I enjoy using. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. And that's and we the way... have less things since we moved. Yeah. So we did, we used part of that moving process to whittle away a lot of the things that we weren't um, using or didn't see a need for. But what we've discovered in that, you know, we've got uh, four bedrooms. Mm. Um, the baby sleeps in our room in, in a basset at the moment, but does have her own room set up with the things so like that. So we have kind of a, a semi nursery that hasn't really yeah. been fully set up because or, we know that use. we're not going to yeah. um, be here for super but, long. But essentially, we've got two bedrooms that um, they just have boxes in them, empty mm. boxes, and that we I just don't foresee us using anytime soon. Yeah, and I certainly appreciate the additional aspect of the backyard. It's quite a large backyard given that it's a townhouse. However, the dogs essentially kind of follow us around the house. They're very much lap dogs. So at the moment, yeah. I'm not really feeling that extra Yeah, we we... we, we I'd always felt a little bit guilty not having a backyard for them when, you know, in your mind's eye, they're speeding around the backyard having the time of their life. But really, they kind of wander out there, find wherever the sun is and just lay down. So They can I'm, do that on a balcony. Yeah, and we just have to get into the discipline of taking them down to um, for toilet breaks it in the morning. In yeah, the and evening. just taking them for regular walks. Yeah. So what we're intending to do is move into Ben's current rental property, which is an apartment yep. nearby. Um, the issues that we've kind of got with that one, which means it's not just a seamless move, is that Ben currently, as it's an investment property, has tenants living in it through a real estate agent. Yep, in a fixed lease. Yeah, so the New South Wales tenancy legislation essentially is very much geared towards the tenant, which means that since they've signed a contract or a lease Mm -hmm. um that's not due until february for renewal so we either wait until february or we consider um trying to see whether we can negotiate an early move by the tenant so we can move in earlier yeah so i just on that just to cover off as well so by all means um the tenant can end the lease at any time by just giving i think it's six weeks notice Mm -hmm. um but in new south wales the landlord can under really no circumstances even like selling a house yeah it's only if they're doing really a lot of damage that violates the agreement that can the landlord actually end the lease before the end of the lease date yeah so that's probably going to be coming up in the next six months but if we have any tips and tricks on how to negotiate with the tenants or whether we come back and have to wait until february then we're happy to do so because we're on a six month lease here and that can then go periodic yeah or us or we move into something smaller um yeah you know it will just be something that we kind of way up once we get an indication of are we waiting to february or potentially um are we able to get in there a little bit earlier yeah, so that's one part of our income producing stream, I guess. Yep, and just to cover off, we've got your place as well. Um, and so yeah. that is an investment property that we do have tenanted. Yeah, so they're similar. So the, as Ben mentioned earlier, they're both Sydney apartments. So it may be that we consider um, getting or diversifying our portfolio a little bit later on by going into a different location or a different type of well, housing well that does um segue perfectly into mm-hmm. uh, in, in sense of diversification amy what are some of our other yeah so we have just recently kind of got into um shares so ben through work has um had some assets in terms of shares from his actual company yeah from the company i work for so um there is an employee share program um through two stints i think i've worked there now maybe seven or eight years mm-hmm. um we usually get you know um, a decent chunk of shares at the end of each financial year so we've got a little bit of a portfolio through that mm-hmm. um, recently or maybe two and a half years ago we yeah. had invested um, just a speculative amount in afterpay yeah so we bought those for I think about four dollars something a share mm-hmm. um, they're now up around the 28 20 or something. yeah so what we did recently so having made um, you know something around six times uh, the money that we invested we pulled out the initial thousand dollars and now it's just the profit sitting there so we're going to potentially start looking around for something else um, mm-hmm. a bit more speculative again um, yeah. to invest that thousand dollars while we let the 
good investment keep riding on that yeah one. so we're kind of still at the conservative stage we realize that we've got a long-term strategy happening but in terms of actually how we choose the shares we've gone with things like raise so the type of investing platforms. oh yeah yeah so other ones yeah so we've got um yeah raise which for um our international listeners um they may know it as acorns yeah because it was acorns in australia then yeah. they changed the name to raise as yeah. a subsidiary of the original i, I think. was when they actually had an initial public offering they had okay. to change yeah change the name oh, so they are different yeah um so we use that as the investment platform that gives us exposure to um australian e- markets uh so etfs so mm-hmm. exchange traded funds and they do that through index funds okay so what that is um I'll give the really simple explanation. Mm-hmm. So an index fund, um, so for example, the Australian Stock Exchange, um, you can get an index fund for the top 200 companies. And what that does, it just tracks the performance of the top 200. What's really good, you don't have to um, fork out the money to buy an individual share in each of those companies, mm. which can be um, a large amount of money considered what one share does trade at for some of those companies. Yeah. So you can invest $5 and still have exposure to the top 200. Yeah. So... So we've got that one. We've yep. also got, uh, we've started investing in Spaceship, which is a similar type yeah. of platform. Uh, the difference is, from what I glean, is that it's a, it opens us up to a different market. Yeah, it's got a lot more exposure to the US companies, which um, given the American economy at the moment, um, is you know a good place to have some money. Yeah, and just again, it's that diversification. So even if the American market went down, because we've got a bit more of a diversification with other markets, yeah. um, that we can handle. Yeah. Now another that one. Struggle. Yeah, another one um, that Amy actually introduced me to a while ago is RateSetter. So RateSetter is the number one platform I think in Australia for peer-to-peer lending. Yep. You might have heard it as P2P. Yep. And essentially, what that is is you act as a banker or a lender to people who prefer a lower interest rate than what they might receive from a personal loan or a business loan from the banks. So we can we get an advantage because we're giving money out and getting it paid back with interest and they're getting an advantage because they're getting a lower interest rate than what they might otherwise receive. Yeah, or sometimes it may not even be a low interest rate. They're getting um, lent money on a criteria that they wouldn't normally get lent yeah. money. Yeah, so maybe the particular terms or the type of yeah. business they are, they might not be able to um, afford that amount of loan. Uh, from the bank so there's heaps of different ways that that might occur but um, we found it really beneficial so far and we're interested to see how it continues to grow yeah. against our um, shares yeah so we've the strategy that we've largely taken on for that pocket as well is long-term investing so mm. we sit around um, our investments there for the five year I think historically it's been around the eight or nine percent return yeah um, in terms of default which is what people really worry about when you're lending money um, through those platforms we've always done it in nothing more than a 50 dollar parcel mm-hmm. so our exposure to one lender is only ever really 50 bucks yeah um, and we haven't had an issue uh, and as a as a um as an organization when you review their financials as well um rate said it hasn't really had much of an issue in terms of payback during this economic cycle yeah so aside from those those are kind of our principal investments at this current stage then we've also got um a random bit invested when Bitcoin seemed to be taking off, but we knew that uh, it was the type of amount where if yeah. it went bust, yeah, and the bubble burst, which it which it did, did. We, we got in at the top of the cycle on that yeah. one, but we're just going to let it ride. That's um, it. We'll just see what happens. And again, it's it's just another way to diversify and make sure that yeah. we're in on something and and not sort of shooting ourselves in the foot at the same time, yeah. long term. Um, and so the other two um, to cover off is obviously the money that we put in our offset. Um, yep. So we use that instead of the savings account. So that way it offsets the offsets the interest yep. on our loans. Um, and the other one, which our international um, listeners might not be that familiar with, is superannuation. Mm-hmm. So in Australia, we have compulsory superannuation. Yep. It's similar to, I think, 401k yeah. or the Roth fund IRA, I think it's called. I think that's actually a special one, a company. Okay, yeah. so someone yeah. out there will yeah. understand and maybe can But what is they, us know. They take a portion of our of our income. Mm-hmm. I think it's 9.5% at the moment. Yeah, so the employer that you're with when yeah. you're employed by someone matches the... Well, actually puts in an amount of money from your pay packet yeah. each week or fortnight or whenever you get paid. And that um, goes 
towards this superannuation fund that you're able to access when you're retirement age, which I think it currently is about 65. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously there's disadvantages to that for people who would prefer the money up front and we can totally yeah. see that. Or happening. want to retire earlier. Want um, to retire earlier. And yeah. hopefully the superannuation laws do change a bit, but there's also a lot of advantages to having that. And it's good for people who um, aren't really thinking about the future, but also aren't going to be able to rely on the government for pensions. Yeah, it's that double-edged sword of um, forced savings. Um, so with a lot of those type of government programs, without getting too much into that mm-hmm. stuff, is that you can only kind of march as fast as the slowest person. Mm-hmm. Um, the government, Australian government wants to get as many people off the government pension as possible, and so forcing them to save some of their own money for retirement, mm-hmm. um, at least in the NIA, seem to be the best way. Yeah, so that's kind of our current yeah. portfolio. So moving forward, we're sort of seeing how those go with an idea. I mean, I'm certainly an advocate of the FIRE movement, Ben less um, So what is the FIRE movement? So the FIRE movement is financial independence, retire early. Ah. And it's something that uh, there's a few big bloggers out there like Mr. Money Mustache. I really love um, Paula Pants Afford Anything podcast. Mm -hmm. And I can go through heaps of other resources for anyone who's interested. But it's a little bit different from Dave Ramsey in that Dave Ramsey kind of says, you've got your income ready to go. about debt reduction. Debt reduction, which, which is something that uh, fire part does of it, cover, yeah. but fire is really about retiring early and not necessarily so you can just sit there and um, drink cocktails on a an abandoned island or deserted island, but that's fine if that's what you actually want to do. But you can also do whatever it is you want. So if you want to work, you can continue to work, but it's just some things that you want to do rather than being uh, forced to work because you have to live paycheck to, check to paycheck. So yeah. you should have a, enough money saved up as if you are retired. Yeah, and I think, um, like you said, the only thing I'd caveat with is not that I'm um, necessarily against it, I'm skeptical. Mm. Um, and the reason why I'm skeptical um, for those who aren't um, native to Sydney or Australia is that the Sydney housing market is quite expensive. It's one of the most expensive in the world. Definitely. So the average house price in Sydney at the moment, I think, is, a, is about a million dollars. Yeah. Um, and wage growth has been quite slow as well. So I suppose for me, um, being able to pay that size a loan off um, mm. in a uh, short amount of time um, yep. without the benefits of inheritance or you know that rich uncle that you never knew about mm-hmm. who bequeathed their estate to you, um, that one I'm skeptical on, but I'm open, yeah. open-minded. So I think um, although it might not necessarily be achievable, all the behaviors that it... Um, gets you to to embody and start implementing um i think are really good so and we can talk about that um now well yeah i'm thinking even another uh, this could go on for like a whole other series so we'll definitely bring in um fire later on and what we're kind of doing with that um but in terms of what we're uh generally doing at the moment is because ben's had some time off work you know, on paternity leave. Paternity leave. So again, the good thing about his company is that they allow for primary carers leave. So what I've essentially done is because I'm a contractor, I've continued to work very soon after the birth of our yep. baby. And Ben has taken on the role, at least on paper, as the primary carer. which oh, me- right. And also, you know, yeah. in real life. But for the purposes of the company, um, he is the primary carer of our daughter. Yep. What that means is that he can take what maternity leave I've forfeited and be at home being paid while he's at home at his full salary. Yeah. And so for Amy as well, um, we have the benefit of she does work from home and has flexible hours. Um, so yeah. that definitely has helped as well. Yeah. So while we've been at home, we've had a lot of time to chat with each other and only each other. And we've decided to um, start considering other ways of making income. One of those ways is this particular channel. So we've looked at YouTube and it's something that I really enjoy doing. And it's something that I've, I'm always kind of dabbling my paws into each day and checking out what people are doing. And it's amazing how much money can be earned and not necessarily just with viral videos, but with more of that slow and steady wins the race type thing, consistent approach and some sort of strategy that we can implement as a business. Yeah, and I suppose it was also a low barrier to entry in that 
a lot of the information, uh, a lot of the things that we're talking about um, in our videos are things that we're already talking about. Um, so it really is just kind of turning on the microphone and having a conversation that we largely already be having. Mm. Um, so yeah, I found it, it's been fun as well. It's something that, um, it, you know, um, we get to be a little bit creative with yeah, and have definitely. a bit of fun with, particularly on our rants, raves and reviews piece as well. Yeah, so we've got two current channels. One is the Amy Blushing channel, and that's kind of a mainstay. So it's not necessarily going to be niched down. It's more it's more that the Rants, Rage and Reviews yeah. yeah, is the first niche account that we have, and that seemed to be the easiest one. So our current strategy is to go kind of easy into it and just do one step at, the, at a time rather than trying to learn everything and then never getting um, started on the platform because it's kind of like... Uh, good is better than perfect or done is better than perfect yeah. so it's that sort of mentality that we're going with at the moment and we'll see how that strategy kind of changes as we go along and that's probably what um, part of these kind of entries that we're doing on personal finance will be about um, but yeah so w we've got heaps of ideas for how the personal finance um, YouTube channel should go but at the moment we'll just keep it on the general channel and hopefully there's some like-minded people out there who uh, enjoy listening to this type of thing, a real life example. And also if we've got tips and tricks and things like that, strategies or questions about how we're kind of applying ourselves to personal finance and what we're learning in terms of books and things like that, um, that's what we'll probably end up doing in future yeah, if you... um, YouTube. Yeah, so I'd What say do you call them? They're not podcasts. Videos. 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 So look... Um, let us know what you think in the comments, yeah. what you're doing. Let us know your story, um, What if there's anything specific that you would like mm -hmm. us to cover as well. Um, you know, we, do, we do have a little bit of knowledge between the two of us, particularly in this, <laughs> um, in this subject matter. So let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. um, hit the like button while you're there and subscribe so you can catch the next awesome personal finance video from Amy and Ben. You. See ya. Bye.